What's going on YouTube? Username KitePipe62 here of KitePipe62 Books and Manga Reviews with another Beast Complex volume review for you all, and it's a volume 3 of Beast Complex, Beast Complex by Paru Tagaki. I cannot talk today, but I just wanted to state here that this video is being recorded on the same day as my volume 2 review of Beast Complex, but this will be released on August 14th at 1.15 p.m. So sit back and relax and listen to what I have to say about Beast Complex Volume 3. Now, Beast Complex Volume 3 has seven short stories this time, and the Beast Complex series is just a random assortment of short stories set in the Beastars universe. And, as always, it's written and illustrated by Paro Itagaki and published by Viz Media. And like before with my Volume 2 review, I will be making separate chapters and discussions for each story featured within this volume, so I'd like to read the back to you all. But before that, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, if you enjoy the content on this channel. I'm your host, Kite, so let's get on with it. So, starting off, Seven Dark Twisted Tales from the World of Beastars. Python Kameji faces a dilemma when he finds Hyena Moreau, the class bully, hanging from a noose in a classroom. Snow Leopard Luke jeopardizes the career of his co-star, Japanese Deer Rosé, when he makes a shocking confession. Lion Edo and Rabbit Akko, former classmates of Dwarf Rabbit Haru, meet again months after the mauling that ended their relationship. Plus a tale featuring favorite beast gray wolf Legoshi and spotted seal Seguan as they attempt to rescue a kidnapped octopus and more. Sounds really intriguing if I say so myself. But let's get on with story one. The Python and the Hyena. So for the first story, as titled, it's called The Python and the Hyena. And the plot is... As Kameji the Python makes his way to class early, Kameji finds the body of a fellow student, a hyena named Moreau, hanging in the classroom. And it's spelled as M-U-R-O-U, so if I pronounce it wrong, I apologize. So for my first side note of this story, could this have been done by another group of bullies, or was Moreau depressed for some time? That's my question here. Like, did he have any friends? Was he just putting up a fake front? Or is, a lot, or is he a lot more lonely than we actually realize? And so for my second side note of this story, I find it interesting that not just Komodo dragons face stigma or stereotyping of their species in this universe. Kameji may be a python, but he's an absolute cinnamon roll of character. Like he's quiet, caring, always got good grades, and always made it to class on time, but... His outward appearance makes him look like a monster to his other, you know, classmates. I mean, with the stigmas of Komodo dragons running about within the first 22 volumes of Beastars, which I'll leave up here. So, yeah, for my final thoughts on this story, it was a really quick and to the point to what true loneliness can do to a person. I'd like to see more stories with Kameji and Moreau in the future. Again, like I said with the volume two, I'd like to see the stories with these characters expanded upon in thicker single volumes. Again, it's just my opinion. Nothing crazy, but again, an opinion's an opinion. So let's get on with story two. Now, for story two, it is titled The Japanese Deer and the Snow Leopard. And so for the plot of this story, a Japanese deer named Rosé and a male snow leopard named Luke finally won an Academy Award for the film Dinner, which is a film where a carnivore and herbivore relationship turns out for the worst. But again, I highly recommend you read Beast Complex Volume 3 or any of the volumes. So I'll leave a link to the top right of this video to that playlist or at the beginning and so, but as continuing on with the plot, during a filming session, a sudden devouring happened at the backlot of the film of one of the 
film producers, and I think it was a duck, if I'm remembering correctly. And so, for side note number one, I just love the scene where, with Rosé and Luke, this sto story has a mix of romantic comedy and, and an onset of, like, whodunit, mystery, murder, tragedy of some sort. And I have to say, I really liked the panel where Rosé's, like, latched on to Luke's back and just looks like she's about to, like, pummel him with her reward. Sorry, it's freaking hot here, so. And so, let's get on with the second side note here. Pages 40 to 43 still give me a vibe of a chaotic romantic comedy. However, I'm shocked with characters, with the character's personality off camera, and Rosé in general, she's not a hated character of mine, it's just narcissistic traits run deeply in this one, if I say so myself. And so for my final thoughts, even though these people are famous actors now, at the end of the day, both still have their internal struggles with their own primal instincts, with herbivores wanting to run away from carnivores, or wanting to dive into their mouth, like with volume four of Beastars, if I remember correctly. So that was really interesting. So let's get on with story number three. The Turtle and the Sheep. So for the third story, The Turtle and the Sheep, the plot is a sheep named Kiyosumi has always done what she was told. However, after an encounter with a turtle named Abu, Kiyosumi's life begins to shift for the better or for the worst. Who knows? And so for my first side note, I really do love Abu's design in this story. He's a turtle, sure, but I first thought he was a Komodo dragon within a turtle shell, but he's also known as the Hell Shell, since he has a birthmark of the word Hell on his back, or he could have made it himself. At least that's what I think. But again, I first thought he was a Komodo dragon. Abu also wanted, wants to become a tattoo artist. He told Kiyosumi this after Abu rescued her from a group of delinquents who were smoking on the school grounds, allegedly, since when Kiyosumi confronted them, they weren't smoking at the time. And so for side note number two, the interactions between the two characters in this story is just so wholesome and adorable, and it was just an all-around wonderful experience as a whole. So I really do hope to see more of Abu and Kiyosumi just doing things together, but... I have to say, from what we saw of Kiyosumi dealing with her horns at first, I had no idea that sheep's horns could end up growing to the back of their head, piercing the back of their skull in some way, which was really surprising and interesting. And so, for my final thoughts on this story, I feel like this story is trying to teach us that we don't have to say yes all the time to everything that we may not feel comfortable doing in certain situations. That's the vibe I got here, so let's get on with story number four. Okay, so starting with story number four, the tiger and the alpaca, a female tiger named Aisha, I think her name is, if I got it wrong, please let me know down in the comments below. Aisha always frequented a chiropractor clinic called the Fluffy Chiropractor Clinic, if I'm remembering correctly. However, strange experiences start happening to her session after session with a chiropractor named Marilyn, who's the alpaca in the situation. And her design really reminds me of a Dairy Queen ice cream cone, just a basic vanilla one for some reason, but she is one scary chick, I can tell you that. So for side note number one, I love how the tiger's viewpoints are changed session after session. Some moments in the story felt like a comedy in the office, scenes and a really intense thriller within the fluffy chiropractor clinic scenes like Aisha wouldn't turn her belly over to Marilyn because that would be a sign of tigers surrendering to their prey or their opponent in some ways and I always thought these little cultural things within the Beastars universe were really interesting and I really wish there was like a dictionary or an big fat index that you could purchase and read about all these different 
cultures and experiences of the different types of species in the Beastars universe. So continuing on with a question I wrote up here after I got done reading is that how much does this alpaca know about carnivore and herd of herbivore anatomy? That's the scary part here. I mean, Marilyn can easily bring Aisha to tears just by touching one of her paw pads and just, like, literally from one panel, she's in absolute tears, but I don't think there was a page number to it, but that expression on Aisha's face of just absolute anguish and pain just really surprised me. And I have to say my final thought is, read this story and let me know what you think down below, because... I feel like if I were to explain everything here out in this review, I feel like it'd ruin it for new readers, but let's get on with story number five. The Wolf and the Seal. Now, as this title states, it's titled The Wolf and the Seal. So the plot is Saguan and Lego she tried to help a mother octopus find her daughter that's been kidnapped by land animals. It could have been some poachers from the back alley market, but who knows. And I have to say, for a side note, it's interesting that marine animals have their own sets of beliefs and customs, and seeing them all on the page was just a beautiful and fascinating sight to see. And I just love how Paru illustrates certain animals. Like, I loved how she drew the mother octopus in this scene and the interactions with Saguan and Lagoshi will those two will always warm my heart and I'll just leave it at that and again definitely read Beast Complex because I really would like to see more people experience this series of stories for themselves but again Paru really popped off with these illustrations and her drawing skills are absolutely immaculate in this volume and so, let's get on with story number six. So, for story number six, it's titled The Lion and the Rabbit. And so, for the plot of this story, Akko and Edo cross paths once again. Could either of them have an ulterior motive? Now, Edo and Akko were a couple featured in volume 14, chapter 119, if I remember correctly, from the Beast Complex volume. If I got that wrong, I apologize, but I always like looking at the little details of like certain things, like mainly the Polboro cigarettes. That's kind of a parody of Marlboro brand. This video is not sponsored, by the way. So anyway, as I said, for the first side note, Akko and Edo were first featured in Volume 14, Chapter 119 of Beastars. The story takes place a little after that horrible incident. Edo still feels horrible about what happened with Akko and how Akko has scars to remind him of that horrible incident. And I have to say, for my final thoughts, no matter what situation an individual may face, horrible or not, they themselves must choose to change. I mean... Akko still has these horrible scars on her face, but she's still as two-faced and conceited as ever, but, you know, Edo may like that. So, let's get on with the final story. Story 7. The Alligator and the Cow. So, for the plot, Nagumo, which is the alligator in the story, and... The cow's name is Heisei, H-E-I-S-E-I, -E invites his friend Nagumo, the alligator, for dinner. So what could go on from here? So again, the plot is Nagumo, the alligator, is invited to his friend's house for dinner. However, one day with a can of beef, beef bouillon, or beef broth in this instance, Nagumo may find himself in an awkward situation. And I have to say, for the first and only side note, I love the fact that the can of beef broth or bouillon can be seen as a metaphor for a can of beer or underage drinking as a whole. And there's like one panel in this volume that still sticks rent-free in my mind. So please go out and read this when you have the chance. So, 
yeah, let's continue on. For my final thoughts, this story's message must mean don't look down on others for their financial situation, or like any of their situation, either, as a whole. After finishing Volume 3 of Beast Complex, this is another 9 out of 10 story for me, and I highly recommend you read this, so that's my review of Beast Complex Volume 3 by Paro Itagaki, so be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy the content on this channel. I'm your host, Kite562, signing out, and as always, I hope you have a wonderful day, everybody. Later.